Next, we will talk about software legacy systems. Okay, let's start by looking at what are legacy systems. So if we look at the definition of legacy, or, or the way it's used in, in some context. So if you are a famous politician or some, some famous person and you are old and then you think about your dying, then you might consider your legacy as the positive things you leave behind. So if you left some great science or great artwork or whatever, then you think of this artwork as your legacy. So it's something positive in that context. In software engineering context, typically not positive. If we look at the definition of legacy from the, from the dictionary, we can see that one of the definitions is it is a sum of money or a specified article given to another by a will uh, or anything handed down by an ancestor or predecessor. So typically these are positive things, but in software engineering context, it is not typically seen so. So the definitions of legacy systems for well, software is legacy systems are vital, software systems that we don't know how to cope with, but are vital to our organization. Another definition is any information system that significantly resists modification and evolution to meet new and constantly changing business requirements. So we can see that in software engineering context, legacy system would be something uh, negative in the sense that it's difficult to change or modify. Uh, but I guess positive in the sense that we cannot just get rid of the legacy system because it is very important for the organization. Here are some properties of legacy systems. They are large, millions of lines of code. Uh, they are geriatric, meaning often older than 10 years, even 20, 30 years, 40 years is possible typically written in obsolete programming language like COBOL or Fortran uh, in these days. They might run on old hardware that is no longer available. So with the legacy systems, if you have a specific hardware, you also have to keep that into consideration. So how the system might start to fail because the hardware starts to fail and the old hardware is not even available. The original developers are gone. They have new jobs, people retire, people also die over the years. So that is another issue. They might have a poor evolvability. Uh, often they do, but it's not necessary. Uh, they lack consistent documentation. They might have poor management of data, flat file structure, no databases, uh, or they can have a degraded structure resulting from years of modification. So if the people developing the software have not been really paying attention to software health, uh, then the availability might be poor. But sometimes it might actually be all right, depending on, depending on the people who are doing it. Uh, regardless, uh, this system is very difficult, uh, some by, sometimes impossible to extend. Okay, so this captures uh, the most typical characteristics of a legacy system. So how do we deal with legacy systems? So there is like two, two main tracks. There's the maintenance track and then there is the modernization re-engineering track. And the maintenance track is basically, those are the, the easy, cheaper solutions. And the possibilities in this track are carry-on maintenance, so typically with the legacy system, you have been doing maintenance with some approach. So you just keep doing it. Uh, if you are lacking sort of dev developer skills, let's say all of your COBOL and Fortran developers might be gone all retired, then you might try to outsource this mm -hmm. or you might try to hire consultants uh, that from a company that specializes in, in having consultants ready that are knowledgeable in COBOL, for, Fortran, whatever uh, obsolete language you are using. Or the, the, the final approach is that you just freeze the software maintenance and uh, do not do any changes. Obviously, as this is an important legacy system, then there might be need for those changes. So it might be difficult to go to the freezing maintenance where you where you don't do anything, but but you still run it. Kind of like the, the servicing phase or the phase out phase in the uh, in the stage model of uh, software, software lifecycle uh, from the previous lecture. 
So those were the easy solutions, the more expensive, more complex ones, the modernization, re-engineering approach can be also divided to three branches. So wrapping would be the, the most lightweight modernization, then it's actual migration re-engineering projects, which are more expensive, uh, have more risk. And then finally, there is the discard and redeveloped, which is most likely the most expensive scenario where you get completely rid of the old one and develop the new one from scratch.